Hey, Dr. Bernard here. This video has absolutely nothing to do with anything you may have seen or heard of in the news. The purpose of this video is to teach what can happen in a poisoning like this. A wife poured drain cleaner in her husband's coffee. This is how his organs shut down. PB is a 41-year-old man presenting to the emergency room with hematemesis, the vomiting of blood. He tells the admitting nurse that yesterday, when he was taking a dump, he looked into the bowl before flushing, and instead of a regular stool, he saw a thick, dark goo that looked like asphalt in the toilet, all of this suggesting that over the last couple of days, there had been significant hemorrhaging taking place in his stomach. PB had a strained relationship with his wife, Katie. They had been trying for so long to have kids, but things just weren't happening. This was just one part of their relationship problems. PB and his wife had met earlier in their lives. He was highly educated and as a young married couple, everything was good until one day, PB was suddenly laid off from his job. Stunned and in disbelief, he tried as hard as he could to find more work in his field, but no one would give him a chance. He tried using his credentials to get companies to bite on his idea of blockchain to optimize logistics, agriculture, and medicine through a company he incorporated himself, but no one would give him the time of day. When that failed, he tried doing a woodworking business, he tried making videos and podcasts, but everything he did ended with him needing a loan that he couldn't pay back, and Katie would have to bail him out. Babe. I just need like $5,000 to pay off the tools and I'll work double time and make more of these to pay you back and then some. I'm just in a tough spot right now. Eventually, he figured out that so long as he made it look like he was doing something, he could live free with no repercussions because his wife would always be there to bail him out. By the way, I was gonna ask you for $5,000 so I could try to buy you a better personality. After all this time, they kept trying to have a child with no luck, and their marriage kept getting strained. If he fails at everything in life, no wonder he fails at making a kid too, she thought. As the years passed, Katie became more and more successful in her career. One day, while she was on a call for work, PB was recording a podcast in the back. I am so sorry about the noise, everyone. My husband is busy being a world-famous podcaster. You guys see? Zero. Just like all of his life successes. Mad at the passive-aggressive dig, PB composited a picture of Katie. In his mind, No Kids Yet was her fault. He didn't have proof of it, but he believed that she was sabotaging it, taking pills behind his back to prevent it from happening in an effort to preserve and progress in her career. God knows what she's doing on those business trips, he thought as he left the picture on the table for her to see. Upset at this horrible depiction, Katie made up her mind. Her entire married life had been carrying the failures of this one person, who appeared completely unthankful for the fact that she allows him to live the life that he does. In nature, a creature that lives off another and enjoys itself at the expense of the other is a parasite, and a pest as such must be removed to keep one healthy as she prepared herself for what she was about to do. PB had had stomach problems all throughout his life. He had a diagnosis of ulcers, where sores would appear at various parts of his stomach, causing massive pain. Sometimes the hurt would flare up for unknown reasons. He'd watch his food carefully, but he also enjoyed things that could aggravate the ulcers. One morning, Katie was making breakfast for PB before he went off to work. He liked to drink black coffee, no cream or sweeteners. This may have made his ulcers worse, but it just seemed to be random at times. Under the sink was a bottle of drain cleaner, and as PB's coffee was ready, she poured some in and served it to him. Did we get new coffee? Why is it so bitter? Oh, your black coffee is bitter? What a surprise! How about you just make breakfast on your own next time? Have a good day, sweetie. As the day continued, PB felt something was wrong in his mouth. He had a weird taste, and it felt like there were hairs at the back of his throat. He felt a sore growing on his tongue, and he really wasn't sure what was going on. The bottom of his chest started to burn as he felt uncomfortable throughout the whole morning as his stomach ulcer pain started to get worse for days. Eventually, PB went to the hospital because his stomach hurt so bad, but doctors just gave him more medicines for his ulcers. Because of his past history, 
they were pretty sure that this is what was happening. He told them about the spicy and sour foods that he'd eat, the black coffee, and they encouraged him to change and avoid those. He did stop eating some of those foods, but it wasn't enough. Katie didn't pour the drain cleaner in PB's coffee every day, but the frequency at which she'd do it and the amount that she'd put in increased. You gotta be kidding me, right? Is this coffee or is this toilet cleaner? One day, PB wasn't feeling well. He could feel a burning just below his chest. He had no idea what Katie was really doing to his coffee, despite him thinking that something was wrong. As he finally takes one more drink, PB felt a burn on his tongue and mouth like never before. <laughs> <coughs> and he's brought to the emergency room where we are now. With a hoarse voice, PB tells the medical team that he drank coffee, then felt some kind of burn was happening in his mouth and throat. He remembers the coffee wasn't steaming. The cup really didn't feel that hot. He said it smelled clean, like laundry, and he wasn't sure if the coffee was stale or rotten or really what had happened at all. He tells them about the constant indigestion that he had been having over the last few weeks and about his ulcers, but the more he was talking about it, the more he started to question himself if everything happening now was all in his mind. At examination, PB appeared to be okay at the moment. He was in mild distress, but he wasn't breathing quickly. His blood pressure seemed okay, his heart rate was a little elevated, but he was in distress. He had vomited blood. Typically, you don't want to vomit, and when you do vomit, you don't want blood, because that's not supposed to be in your stomach contents. His stools were black and tarry. This also means that blood had been in his stomach contents and passed all the way through his intestines and out of his body, the black color and tarry consistency being the digested remnants of the red blood cells. All of this meaning that PB has had some kind of GI bleed happening for at least a couple days now, but why? Drain cleaner is a mix of sodium hypochlorite, which is bleach, sodium chloride, which is table salt, and sodium hydroxide, also known as lye or caustic soda. If the word caustic refers to a substance that can cause a chemical burn, then we can take a guess as to where the burns in PB's mouth, tongue, esophagus, and stomach are coming from. But PB and the medical team don't know that drain cleaner was put into the coffee that he drank. The caustic chemicals in drain cleaner are high in pH. They're not acids, they're bases. In some household cleaners, the basicity is so high that the cleaner will cause damage on contact with human tissue. But how does that that happen. Human cells are defined by a lipid bilayer. Lipid referring to fats, which in chemistry is really long chains of carbon, which is what oils are made of, and bi meaning two, a double layer membrane made with fats defining the border of a cell. The chemical reaction happening here is called saponification. If the drain cleaner that PB drank contains a high concentration of sodium hydroxide and body cells are lined with a layer of fats, then it means when he drank the drain cleaner in his coffee, it wasn't bitter because it was black coffee, but that it was stripping the lining of his throat and his esophagus. As it flowed down into his stomach, it was ripping open the cells on the way down, destroying the tissue, making soap out of the inner lining of his gastrointestinal tract. Katie didn't put a lot of drain cleaner, but she also didn't mix it very well. PB may have gotten what he did in clumps, as gulps of the drain cleaner contaminated coffee would roll down and start lysing the cells, eating away the tissue and causing caustic burns. And the longer the drain cleaner was in contact with the same spot in his GI tract, the deeper the wound, because more time would allow it to react and penetrate in. Because it wasn't huge amounts of drain cleaner in his coffee all at once, the small doses PB would get could cause damage in the form of ulcers in the GI tract. But PB already had ulcers his entire life. When ulcers become deep, they too can cause GI bleeds. All of this explaining everything happening to PB. Without knowing about the drain cleaner, how could anyone tell the difference between the ulcers that he had his whole life and the ones caused by ingesting drain cleaner? As the medical team look at the camera going down his throat, they find that his esophagus was swollen, inflamed, and filled with ulcers. Parts of it had sloughed off, liquefied like soap and necrosed, consistent with caustic injury that can happen with the ingestion of drain cleaner. It wouldn't look like this if PB's only problem were ulcers, but it wasn't the only thing that they found. 
Doctors find that PB's lower esophagus has started to narrow and close up, something called a stricture. When tissue necrosis, it sloughs off, like how it did when PB first accidentally drank drain cleaner. A healing process then started to take place where the injury happened. New blood vessels start to form, and a protein called collagen started to deposit where the tissue died, forming scar tissue. It's similar to what happens when you get a deep cut on your skin, except caustic ingestion happens to a part of the body that isn't as robust with protective features like the skin. The deeper the caustic injury, the more scar tissue that collects, causing a greater narrowing of the esophagus. All of this suggesting that whatever's happening to PB now has happened to him in the past. That time he was in the hospital earlier, it wasn't his ulcers flaring. Rather, he was correct in thinking that something was wrong with his esophagus because there may have been actual caustic injuries at that time, and he doesn't know that. Overall. PB appears to be okay in the hospital, but as the time continues, his blood pressure starts to drop while his heartbeat starts to increase. All of this happening while he's experiencing a sharp pain in his abdomen. He's starting to have a fever and blood tests find that his liver and his kidneys are starting to shut down. Doctors order scans and find that in his abdomen, there's a large volume of free fluid and gas right outside of his gut. Those aren't supposed to be there, so where are they coming from? Well, if it's a gas, it could be air. When you breathe, your lungs contain the air that's inhaled and exchange the oxygen for carbon dioxide for exhalation. But air doesn't just flood into the abdomen in the form of free gas. So for PB, it's not coming from what he's breathing. The GI tract does produce gas from the gut's bacterial metabolic activity, and stomach acid and food are also fluids. If this is what's in his abdomen, then it means that something in his GI tract must have perforated and is now leaking its contents out. As the gut bacteria starts oozing out in PB's abdomen, his immune system detects this. When you get a cut on your skin, the area becomes swollen and warm. This inflammation is the immune system detecting the cut and dilating the blood vessels so that immune cells can get into the injured area. But for PB, he didn't get a cut. His immune system is reacting to the huge bacterial load flowing out of his gut. His blood vessels start to dilate, causing his blood pressure to drop. This makes it harder for oxygen to get to the organs as they start shutting down. The kidneys can't filter the blood, the liver has problems processing the body's waste, and then the brain starts to get hypoxic. Hypo meaning low, and ox referring to oxygen as he starts to lose consciousness. We know that PB has an extensive history of stomach ulcers. We also know that he has a current injury from caustic ingestion. Both of these can cause GI tract perforation. So how can we be absolutely sure which one caused this? Doctors send PB in for surgery. When they look, they find a caustic burn where the perforation happened, suggesting that the drain cleaner, not his pre-existing ulcers, was the cause of his stomach contents leaking out into his abdomen, causing shock, causing his organs to shut down. Surgeons close up the perforation and drain his abdomen. As he's sent into the recovery room, PB seems to be okay. As the days and weeks pass in the hospital, he's able to eat food again. He's able to get up and walk with some help. Throughout his entire hospital stay, he saw Katie once, despite his medical care being covered through her employer's health insurance. And as awkward as that arrangement was, PB was able to make a recovery, unlike his marriage to his wife. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.